Hey there, Vulture Pilots. Uh, I got some tips and tricks for you today to uh, help minimize some issues that you may potentially have with your Vulture. Um, so I've built about half a dozen of these Vultures and I'm still learning the uh, nuances of this drone. And I thought I'd share some of my advice with you in order to help you learn from my mistakes. So one of the important things we'll be talking about today are the camera quick release mechanism, optimizing that clip so it has a stronger hold and increases durability over time through use. Oh yeah, by the way, another small sub trick is after you release these, you have to twist the camera to release that back one. If you try to yank it off, you're gonna break the clip. And then I'll show you how to do field repairs on internal components that you cannot access just through the side, but if you need top access, uh, I'll show you how to do that safely. Okay, before I even begin, here's the biggest tip. Uh, zip tie your coaxial cable for your FPV air unit or whatever to the flight stack. Um, this will prevent uh, the front nacelle yanking on the cable and breaking this connection um, if you're disassembling it. Because one time I had this zip tie to here in my assembly video. That's the direction that I told people to do. That's actually wrong. You should zip tie it to the flight stack so that when you're pulling on this, if you accidentally yank it, you're not going to destroy these wires that are connected to the uh, Vista. So first, let's entertain a hypothetical scenario in which we need to swap out our antenna. Let's say this antenna is broken for some reason and we need to uh, exchange it for a new one. Let me walk you through the process of doing this without damaging other components during disassembly. Okay, first off, you got to remove your side shrouds. Um, just be gentle with these. Don't squeeze them too hard because you can potentially break them. But, you know, you just squeeze them. And uh, right now, <laughs> imagine there's a landing gear right here, okay? So you squeeze them and then you kind of tilt them this direction in order to avoid the landing gear and then pull straight out. Uh, the next step would be to remove the landing gear. Uh, you just use a uh, two millimeter hex driver um, and remove the screws from the bottom. I'm using my landing gear on my seven inch Vulture right now because I only have one. <laughs> and be sure to remove the antenna from the landing feet to attach to the landing gear uh, by clipping the two zip ties that hold it on. Okay, so um, first you wanna release these uh, bottom joists. Okay, once you've done that and set those screws aside safely, then uh, loosen one of these side screws that are holding this bracket. Just loosen it, don't remove the screw. Then raise your camera mount to its highest position and go in from the top to uh, undo that little screw that's tied into the plastic bracket. And you might have to grab the screw using uh, some tweezers like this. Okay, that's all the screws we need to loosen. Next, we have to uh, remove the front vertical plates. To do that, uh, we want to prevent from yanking. You just don't want to yank on it because that could break uh, the FPV camera wire. Really, it's best to uh, remove these two screws from the camera, but you know, I get it. Sometimes you're doing these repairs in the back of your car and you don't have time for that and you just want to get the job done. I'll show you the technique to do it safely and reduce your repair time. To shimmy the front part of this drone off of the rest of the drone, first uh, take your fingers like this and kind of just press forward like that. You see how I'm uh, kind of pushing that? And then flip it over. And uh, you can also press back here like that, just pushing forward like this. If there's a lot of force and it hurts your fingers to do that, you can take a uh, two millimeter hex driver and the trick is you insert it into this hole right here, not all the way so that you're into the plastic bracket, but only so far as deep as the carbon fiber. And then you pull upward and use a lever action in order to push the uh, front plates off. Then you might have to repeat the process a couple times, uh, push on the bottom plate, you see, you could hear it um, kind of loosening there, and then just go back and forth making sure that you're taking small little steps at a time to uh, to loosen the front assembly here. And you see, I didn't have to remove the camera completely. I'm just leaving it dangling here. That's good enough for this hypothetical field repair. Then we want to do the same thing to remove this bottom plate, pinch it between these two and uh, remove it like, like that. Now you can easily access your antenna, loosen that screw, 
undo that clip, replace your antenna. This is actually a healthy antenna, so I'm not gonna do that. And just remember, if I made a mistake and I yanked on this and pulled on the uh, FPV cable, this little zip tie is what would save my skin out in the field and prevent me from killing my drone. So, uh, so definitely do this trick. Okay, and so I'm just gonna put it all back together. Something that I tend to forget is the bottom plate. Make sure to insert that before you go ahead and put your drone back together. One issue you might run into when assembling it is the uh, this little plastic bracket might be angled downward, so it's preventing um, the engagement of the little fingers or teeth there. So you can just stick your screw in there and just bend it upward a little bit so it clears, and then I'm able to uh, slide that in there without the bracket getting in the way. Just like that. And now that the front plate is completely on, the first screw that I tighten just to secure everything into place is this one. Okay, once you've installed the bottom joists, tightened this screw and inserted the uh, top uh, bracket screw. The next step is to install the landing spar and then um, secure your antenna to the foot of the landing spars using the zip ties. As I said earlier, I don't have a landing spar right now, so you can ignore that. The next tip concerns the camera quick release mount. Let's say, for instance, you have a little bit of uh, sideways play here. Uh, this is an issue more with the first 50 vultures that I put out. I think the uh, slider bushings might be a little bit too loose, so they slide easily back and forth, but there might be some rocking action, which may or may not show up in your footage, uh, depending on how much play there is. So to avoid that, what you can do is actually print a whole variety of inner diameters of these slider bushings in order to achieve the uh, tightest fit possible, but still allow some sliding action. If you prefer to use slightly larger cameras like the Sony ZV-E10, or even up to Red Komodo, I suggest printing bushings that are a tighter fit. But if you want to fly cameras like the Sony ARC-02, then you want a looser fit like this one. So on my seven inch Vulture prototype, my camera mount was extremely loose. And uh, when I flew, I could definitely see jiggles in the footage. So I 3D printed some tighter bushings. These happen to be 5.3 millimeter. That may not be what's correct for you because my standoffs are a little bit thinner because they're from Amazon. They're not from my regular supplier. So I 3D printed these custom bushings out of polypropylene. Uh, you can also use TPU as long as the uh, inner circle is nice and round. If you see any kind of blobs or um, zits on the external perimeter of this inside hole, that's going to cause issues with the sliding and uh, reducing play in the joint. One trick for 3D printing to get a smoother surface is to increase your fan speed for external perimeters and keep your fan speed lower for internal perimeters to maintain strength. Anywho, uh, so I'm just gonna insert these new bushings Oh, and by the way, if you ever need to remove one of these, uh, I find it's easiest to use a tool like this. Just kind of squeeze it in there and uh, press it out like that. Okay, and so I'm gonna reinsert my uh, standoff and now it, it has zero play whatsoever. When I pull up and down on it, it's got no jiggle whatsoever, um, but I can still slide it back and forth. That sliding action is a little, you know, it's not, it's silky and smooth, but it does require some force. But I want it to be a little bit looser to uh, maintain the vibration isolation characteristic of this mount. So what I'm putting on here is some silicone grease. Uh, polypropylene prints like this and TPU are very chemically resistant. So you can use a whole variety of uh, lubricating greases, such as petroleum jelly, white lithium grease, um, I don't know, there's probably a ton of other lubricating greases that you can use that are uh, perfectly compatible with these kinds of plastics. And after doing that, now when I slide it back and forth, it takes much less force and there's still no play in the vertical direction, which would translate to a kind of rotational play if you had a camera attached to it. 
So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, lube up my second standoff here. Yeah, no vertical play, but it slides back and forth easily. Okay, once you're happy with the uh, amount of play in the bushings and that they slide easily, um, I'm going to show you the proper way to mount up your camera fangs for best performance with the camera clip system. Uh, first step is attach one of your camera clips to your go-to camera. Whichever camera you're going to be using most often, attach it to that one. So in my case, it's the EV10. Then attach the remaining two 30 millimeter standoffs to the inner holes of both camera fangs. But this time, do not tighten all the way. Just make it barely finger tight, like feather tight. That's how loose you want it. Okay, so I've screwed them in, but I'm just gonna back off a little bit just so I can feel that is, there's some play in the standoffs. It's gotta be loose. And keep in mind, um, there should be Loctite on these screws. I already had Loctite left over from when I disassembled it, so I'm just gonna not reapply and call it a day. Okay, so fit your camera fangs over the, uh, the slider bushing mount, and then install your remaining eight millimeter uh, button head screws in the back. You might have to hold down and then don't tighten all the way, just back off a little bit. Okay, so everything is loosey-goosey here. In fact, I'm gonna just loosen this a little bit more. Okay, lastly, let's install the uh, thumb screws. You can leave it in the flat position and tighten the thumb screws. All right, so why did I leave these three standoffs loose? The reason why is because now that I have my camera clip here, I can install the camera and snap it on. And now that it's adapted to the camera and to the camera clips, these standoffs can be tightened into place such that they have the perfect alignment with the quick release mechanism. Okay, and so I'm just gonna loosen the front knobs a little bit to raise that camera up so I can get my finger underneath the uh, quick release latch. So what this enables you to do is have a smoother experience when clipping the camera on and it also increases the holding strength of the clip because the uh, standoffs are better aligned with the uh, holes of the camera clip mechanism. And lastly, it also reduces the chance that your clip will break in the field from being overextended or overstressed by misaligned standoffs. And then finally, as a last tip, you should pick up one of these Phillips 3 stubby drivers. Uh, they're quite handy for getting a nice uh, solid engagement with these quarter 20 screws for these camera clips. And if you're using a red Komodo and you can't uh, connect it to the camera using the shoehorn method, what you have to do is install this clip onto the mount first, and then you flip it over, put it on top of the red Komodo upside down, and then get a longer Phillips 3 screwdriver and screw it down from the bottom side. And of course, with a red Komodo and other large cameras that are absolutely gigantic like this, uh, you, you want to use battery straps underneath uh, both arms around the camera to help secure it further. At that size of camera, you don't have to worry about vibration isolation as much, especially with six inch and seven inch uh, propellers. So you're more concerned with keeping the camera fixed securely to the drone, less concerned with uh, vibration management. Okay, so hopefully those tips and tricks can help you out there in the field and minimize the chance that you break your vulture or have any issues with uh, getting smooth footage. If you have any other tricks that you've learned, feel free to leave that in the comments below or uh, follow my Rotor Builds page for the vulture and comment there. But thanks for watching.